those people should have received everything they wanted to, right? That's correct. Did you have a lot of demand um, from your loan customers for loans during this time? Demand is, is quite dependent on, on us actually to generate it. How do you think the lending volumes of Bondora will continue in the next few months? Das folgende Video ist das aktuellste Interview, das es zu Bondora gibt. Und hier spreche ich mit Matt, dem Vice President of Product und Investing, über Bondora Go and Grow, wie hier eigentlich die Krise angegangen wurde was daraus auch gelernt wurde, wie das Ganze funktioniert hat und wie Go and Grow jetzt funktioniert. Ich wünsche dir viel Spaß bei diesem Interview, das ich in Englisch gehalten habe auf meinem Podcast. Link unten in der Videobeschreibung zur ganzen Folge. Denn ich habe hier deutsche Untertitel hinzugefügt. Das braucht sehr, sehr viel Arbeit. Und deswegen ist das Teil 1 von 2. Ich hoffe, das Video gefällt dir. Lass mir gerne einen Daumen nach oben da. Und jetzt noch ein Hinweis in eigener Sache. Worte für Northern Finance beim Comdirect Finanzblock Award. Das ist der erste Link unten in der Videobeschreibung. Dort werden Finanzblocks gekürt, die aufstrebend sind. Und mich würde sehr freuen, wenn du mich hier bei der ganzen Sache unterstützen kannst. Das Ganze sind auch nur zwei Klicks. Würde mich freuen, wenn du hier mitmachst, wie gesagt. Und jetzt kommen wir auch direkt zum Video und zum Inhalt von diesem Interview mit deutschen Untertiteln. You're holding up, Matt. I'm doing well, Alex. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on the on the podcast today and on the video. So uh, we've been quite lucky here because the COVID situation hasn't had such a, a massive impact in terms of, you know, being locked down and, and closing services. We're pretty much back to normal here right now. Um, Estonia as a whole, I mean. So, yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. Okay. How are you doing? And are you still in Cyprus? Yeah, yeah, I've moved to Cyprus a few weeks ago and um, really enjoying it and uh, glad to see that you're back in your offices again. If we look at the United States or other developed markets, then most people won't be uh, working anywhere else but from home. So uh, good that you're recovering quickly over there in Estonia. Yeah, I've seen the same in the UK with a bank where I used to work that they're not working in the office until next year. So yeah, uh, yeah quite a difference. It sure is. It sure is. So um, how is business going um, at Bondora? Everything is going well. We are, um, like I said, mostly back into the, the office again as a team. Um, right. Our originations are, are lower, of course, than the start of the year, but we are originating this month roughly around 2.5 million, a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, overall, we, we haven't had to you know, make any changes to staffing or anything because of COVID uh, and That's everything great. has remained business as usual pretty much. Okay, okay, good, good. Um, what I really liked about Bondora was um, how you reacted to the uh, COVID situation um, with Go and Grow because um, many people were surprised that um, they couldn't withdraw the money if they wanted to but I guess in that instance, they didn't quite read um, precisely what was um, in the contracts we have uh, with Bandora Go and Grow. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Why it took some time to uh, withdraw money in that situation? Yeah, of course. So the reason why they couldn't withdraw money much faster as, as you can today, for example, right. is due to partial payouts. Now, partial payouts were built into the product from day one. So a couple of years ago, and that was for a situation just like COVID. And the reason being is that if you allow much larger than usual withdrawals to all mm. happen at the same time, it can damage the underlying portfolio. Because as you said at the, the start of this call today, there's over 100,000 underlying loans in the portfolio, which are continuously generating a cash flow for investors. Mm. And, you know, a, a lot of people didn't withdraw. So we don't want to damage the underlying portfolio. I didn't withdraw portfolio. either. Exactly. <laughs> so we don't want to damage the underlying portfolio for the people who didn't make a withdrawal as well and who continue right. to invest throughout that period. Um, so that's the reason why. Um, and essentially what it means is that if you initiate a withdrawal, you will get it in partial amounts, not the full amount straight away. And it's generated by the underlying cash flow that comes in every day, right? Yeah. So that, that's the reason why. Yeah, so that in some instances um, took a few weeks or um, maybe longer, but I guess now it is all resolved again, right? If someone uh, withdrew in the middle of the COVID crisis, um, now it's uh, back to normal and um, those people should have received everything they wanted to, right? That's correct. And actually, I can test it for you today live and show yeah, you sure. if you like. 
Sure. Go so, uh, as I said, the withdrawals should be in your account instantly if your bank right. is a member of SEPA Instant Payments, which most major banks are today. So you can you can time me if you like. I'm just pressing confirm for a small withdrawal, and okay. I've got my pin code through now. Right. So for the people listening on a podcast, Matt is currently on his phone and withdrawing, and uh, and I've just pressed sign. Twenty seconds. So now my withdrawal has been initiated, and I'll tell you when it comes through. Okay. And there it is. You heard it then. 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Most of that was just me being slow as well. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, but uh, so the withdrawals work again and um, that's that's great to see. And um, I think it's also um, a prudent move, not only um, to initiate the partial payouts, um, but to also not um, purchase new loans for the go and grow portfolio. So that's also um, cash flow again, where those requested withdrawals will then of course be handled faster if the portfolio is not buying new loan pieces. So um, I like that uh, really quite a lot, but um, did you have a lot of demand um, from your loan customers for loans during this time? Demand is, is quite dependent on, on us actually to generate it because we've noticed if we just increase our marketing, then we can kind of, you know, increase the, the demand as well. So right. the demand pretty much seems to be there, but we, we've been very cautious with the portfolio. So mm. that, that's why we are not lending in Finland and Spain at the moment, just to reduce our costs, but just to have more control over the quality of the underlying portfolio for this time as well, because uh, that's obviously really important to us right now and helping borrowers who, who really need it too. Um, yeah, but yeah, great. so the demand is kind of, it's a you know, marketplace, it's, it's both sides, but, but yeah. Okay, okay. And um, can you tell investors a little bit more about the difference between the liquidity and the return reserves you have for Go and Grow? Sure, yeah, so they're, they're two different things. The, the liquidity is roughly 15% of the portfolio, which is kept in cash, and that's just accounting for daily withdrawals and, and uh, deposits as well. And right. this is so we can deliver the, the fast liquidity to investors mm-hmm. for when they need, like I just did then. Mm-hmm. And uh, the reserve fund, if any returns are generated over the target of 6.75%, Bondora actually has no claim on that. So what it means is that that goes into a reserve and it's there for the times where we may not be able to generate that return because it, it's not guaranteed, as we've said before. So right. uh, that's the reason for it. And it kind of gives just investors a an extra layer of protection to know that that's there as well. Okay, um, the liquidity reserves um, were drained up during the crisis, obviously. That's why the partial payouts were introduced and um, I guess they're building up now again. Um, how large are the uh, return reserves? We haven't shared that figure of what the return reserves are. And the reason being is that it typically doesn't really add any value to the investor experience to, to have like an additional figure which is there because quite simply, it would look like it's kind of um, something that you could take a dividend from, right? That you know you would expect to get a payout from that when actually it doesn't work like that. It's there just for, for reserves. Um, so we haven't shared that figure, but the amount in it is enough to generate the returns for the portfolio for another 12 months alone, not including the underlying cash flow, which comes in every single day. So uh, that, that's the amount behind it. Okay, okay. And this um, 12 month figure, I guess, is um, granted if everything stays the same, if um, the number of investors um, doesn't explode and 100,000 new people decide to join Bondora. (laughs) Okay, Um, let's talk about the um, raffle you recently had, um, the Bondora car. A uh, fully equipped new BMW 3 Series um, worth um, 70,000 euros in a time of a global um, economic meltdown. Why did you have this raffle um, at that time and um, who won? Well, 
seventy thousand euro sounds like a lot, but it's it's actually not. If you think of a company with over twenty million in revenues, uh, seventy thousand euro for a three month marketing campaign is quite small, actually. If you compare it to companies of a similar size, what they would spend on just paid acquisition on Google ads or, or social ads, for for example, uh, mm-hmm. so the kind of cost that you don't see. So. Overall, it was really well received by investors um, because, you know, it's visual. It's something that they could actually maybe sit in and then, you know, drive. So uh, it was won by a investor in Austria. And we have created a video of us handing over the car to the investor. And that's going to be coming soon. Really keep an eye out for that because it's it's awesome. I uh, sure will. And um Regarding the um, promotions of uh, Bondora in general, um, you were also in uh, German television uh, with an ad. And um, uh, can I can I ask you or can you answer um, what the cost for that was compared to the car? Um, that's not something that I can share because I'm yeah. not, I'm not too sure of the figure on that right now. But uh, any kind of marketing campaign. Um, you know, it's a test for us to, to get more investors in a profitable way for us, which also benefits yeah. the community. Yeah, I just think um, the the car, um, it, the raffle might have maybe come at the wrong point in time. But um, I think that marketing campaign was not as expensive as uh, maybe others with the television or Google AdSense or whatever there uh, is instead. Yeah, I mean, we've been planning that campaign with the car for a long time but we've been thinking about it for for quite a while and uh we decided to to do it then but yeah it had been in the yeah. backlog for, for quite some time okay okay um and in comparison to the times um before the coronavirus um hit europe uh, the rest of the world also um so january february or december of last year um, how did the business change? Um, how was business going back then and how is it compared to now? I mean, at the beginning of the year, we were, of course, originating a lot more around 20 million euro or maybe a bit more. So, um, of course, it was much more at that time. But right now we, we started investing with Go and Grow again last month. As I said at the start of the call, this month it's been around uh, around 2.5 million that's originated. So it's it's less, but um, what's great about Bondora is that you that we don't have to have huge growth every single month in our key metrics like originations to be sustainable, because if our originations are lower, then our operating costs are much lower as well. So uh, it's a real benefit for us in this time period, and that's why the business has been built on these automated automated processes, um, because we don't need that huge you know triple percent growth uh, every single month to be sustainable mm -hmm. and right. we're, we're a profitable company you, you've probably seen our, our financial results just recently where yeah. we made a profit of 2.3 million so uh, for last year was the annual report report uh, published as well yes it's available on our support page just type in financial performance of Pandora and you'll see for last year and the previous years as well okay so that will then the be the annual report with uh, 30 pages in it that's um, it right great um that that's also um what i like about the way you do business i mean other companies are of course also publishing um their annual reports and um, they're audited and everything but um, publishing the numbers every month of the portfolio that you have um and uh, such a large portfolio i think that's uh that's a very prudent move. Um, I like that very uh, quite a lot. And um, regarding also the numbers that you publish, um, how do you think the lending volumes of Bondora will continue in the next few months? Do you have a strategy for that? They'll probably steadily increase over the next few months toward the end of the year. You know, we're, we're not targeting massive expansion at this point. Um, so we will kind of judge it based on the market and, and of, of course, maintaining the portfolio quality as well, maintaining the portfolio quality. So uh, that's something we'll be focusing on. And it will probably just steadily increase toward the end of the year. And we'll see how the economic situation is at the time before we make any uh, you know, different decisions to that.